Welcome to another Lumi Investment Corner. With us once again, Michael Zaremski, head of U.S. private banking for Bank Lumi USA, member of the investment committee for Lumi Investment Services. Michael, good to have you back. How are you doing? Good to be back, Zev. Everything's well. Hope things are well with you and your family. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, just a reminder before we get started that the views being reflected represent my views, not necessarily the views of the bank or the broker-dealer. So, you know, we discussed in previous weeks how the stock market is doing fairly well considering the circumstances. So overall, I know the economy is in in a struggling shape right now. Everybody's trying to reopen the economy, but yet the market seems to be holding its own. So what do you see happening? How do you look at the whole situation from an economic point of view? Well, Zev, one of the most frequently asked questions that we get from our clients is, what do we think the shape of the recovery is going to be? And I think it's a challenging question because I think that there's two distinct recoveries that are happening. And we touched on this the last time we spoke, but I think it's clear right now that the equity market and the economy have somewhat diverged, and the the tight correlation between them is kind of separated out. So I think that we are definitely in the throes of a V-shaped equity market recovery. And when you look at the NASDAQ uh, basically being somewhat around flat on the year-to-date basis, you look at the significant recovery we've seen in the Dow and the S&P 500 uh, now only down about 10 to 12 percent on a year-to-date basis. That's a far cry from the economic results that we've seen posted uh, for Q1 and the expectations that we have for Q2. Um, so a lot of what we're seeing right now is the massive stimulus that's come into the market from the central bank, as well as from the federal government in the form of fiscal response. And that ends up all being a massive bridge loan, if you will, into the economy or into the market, I should say. And at this point in time, one of the old adages is, you know, don't fight the Fed. And the Fed has really thrown so much support behind the markets right now that, again, we're seeing this divergence between what's happening on on Main Street, if you will, small businesses and the small business part of the economy versus what's happening in the equity market, which is where people are putting money to, to, to make investment. So overall, it sounds like you're cautiously optimistic. Yeah, I think the real challenge that we're going to continue to see is at what pace does the economy improve versus how much stimulus is in place for the economy. So if we think back to kind of the darkest days of, uh, you know, of, of February and March, uh, the Fed stepped in with a massive 150 basis point reduction in interest rates. And they've announced some really significant um, quantitative easing programs, the latest of which uh, was implemented this week, which is the buying of investment-grade corporate credit, as well as uh, delving into high-yield corporate credit. Um, So the credit markets are open. Um, The bond markets, in terms of new issuance, are strong. Capital is available, and capital needs to go someplace for investment purposes. Um, So again, the government is trying to put enough stimulus behind the market to sustain everything long enough so that eventually economic recovery can take place and there will be enough support for all that to happen. And I think that the, the, the balance of where the equity market hinges is that the Fed stepping in on the interest rate cut, again, the cut was a lot more rapid than an eventual rise will be somewhere down the line, two years, three years, four years, et cetera whatever that time frame is. And similarly, when the Fed goes in and makes the bond market purchases, um, that stimulus is going to be in the market for a really long time. The it, offset to that, it, I'm sorry, Zev, the offset to that is we're starting to see more and more states open up. So again, states like Georgia, Texas, Florida, Arizona, they're going to be the real benchmarks to see what happens with further COVID infections or further COVID deaths or further issues related to it. And I think even when you look at what's happening here in the state of New York, uh, you see that Governor Cuomo made the decision to break the state up into seven different regions. Each region is being scored separately. And as we speak today, three of the regions clear all seven of the federally mandated categories for reopening. I'm sorry, three of the regions meet all seven of the categories for reopening. 
So things are going to happen sporadically. Things are going to happen across different parts of the market. And it's just going to be a question of what is the speed of opening? What is the uptake of consumers to want to be in restaurants, want to be engaged in normal activity uh, versus how long the stimulus is out there in the marketplace? Because people have compared it to 2008, the economic slow down the, the, that took place then, but it's different now, and that's what I want to get your opinion, because it, these are not due to the economic factors, but to the corona, the COVID-19 factor, and therefore when things get back to normal, things won't be as bad as it was then, and there'll be certain segments of the economy that are going to do well, that are even doing well now, like grocery stores and mass companies. Some of these companies are doing very, very well, despite uh, Netflix, uh, a certain entertainment companies. So we're seeing that. Right. So uh, you, you hit on two very important points. Um, so the first point of it is, in 2008, 2009, the financial system itself was broken, and it needed to be repaired. Um, whereas today, we're looking at a very different environment where the financial system is healthy. It's just we've had this government-imposed shutdown. Regardless of what the government does, the real issue is going to be what happens here from the consumer standpoint. So if the government mandates that all restaurants open, it can't mandate that people go to those restaurants. So just because things open, it's not going to be until people feel comfortable and safe using them. And one of the things that I am encouraged about is that I think companies and businesses continue to find new ways to reopen safely uh, by using some of the social distancing methodologies I mean, I think for anybody that's gone to a supermarket, there's now a plexiglass uh, piece between you and the cashier. So people are doing things to try to make it more comfortable for the consumer to come back and to shop and to experience and to do things. And I think that that will continue. Uh, so it's very different in that regard that the economy itself isn't broken, per se, where it was in 2008, 2009. Now it's a question of consumer confidence from that. And I think your other point is really uh, pertinent, and this is something that we're doing within our investment strategies. Um, and within those investment strategies, what we're really focused on is things like technology, kind of what participates in the digital world, as well as essentiality. So again, a big focus on things that are related to the food supply chain, a big focus on banks, parts of the economy that are truly essential, that are relatively healthy, uh, that are part of what's enabling us to sustain in the environment that we're in. So I think that we've got to be mindful about the economic activity will open up in different regions at different paces and will also impact different sectors and industries at different paces as well. Michael Zaremski, head of U.S. private banking, Bank Leumi USA, member of the investment committee for Leumi Investment Services. Thank you for being with us. Look forward to having you back again. Thank you, Zev, and I hope everybody remains safe and sane in these uh, challenging times. Absolutely. And we're going to be right back. <laughs> 